7.37, welcome back. You're watching and listening to Breakfast with Stephen and Ellie. And it's time to go through the papers now. Joining us this morning is the deputy editor of Spite, Fraser Myers, and political commentator and playwright Emma Burnell. Good morning to you both. And Emma, we're just talking about the coronation, so we're going to stay on that theme. And, and it's going to coincidentally eclipse a predicted Tory wipeout in town hall elections. That's in the Express. Yes, the Tories have... Um considerable luck when it comes to um, Prince Charles's um, moments in the sun. Um, the coronation will come straight after the local elections. The local elections are expected to be not great for the Tories. Now, the numbers that they're putting out there are probably not realistic. They always do this. All parties do this. It's not just the Tories. They're saying we're going to lose a thousand seats. Well, actually, the last time these seats up were up was in 2019 under Theresa May, when she was not in a good place. So, actually, the uh, the difference between then and now will be less pronounced, I think. But it's all expectation But it's expectation management, management exactly. But they, it probably isn't going to be um, Rishi Sunak's best night, but he will be able to go straight on to the coronation and people will just not want to talk about the local election results. Because, no. I mean, it'll it, take a while to come through yeah. as well. They're not quite as quick as the general election results. So we'll get some Friday morning when we're on. Love, um, and then we get the rest on Saturday morning, which we won't be talking about at no, all, really. Ab absolutely, and uh, I think in some ways this is, you know, this is obviously they're, they're happy that we won't be talking about it, but the underlying problem won't be solved, that they are probably going backwards in actual polls rather than opinion polls. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wonder if it might have been better for them to take a hit now and do the work rather than cover this over, plaster over the cracks. Mm. We shall see. Yeah, and it's usually the kind of thing that would, you know, a bad result, as we're expecting, would get you to question the leadership. Um, but Rishi Sunak is pretty secure in yeah. that role. Um, I don't think anyone's going to be calling for his head over these results. No. Um, Has he got enough time to fix it, though? I mean, if, if it's as bad as everyone expects. A, we're looking at a general election next year. Well, it's a, it's a tiny amount of time to turn things around. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, especially if you're thinking about the economy being one of the major factors, yeah. big one of Rishi Sunak's promises was to um, get inflation under control. Um, it's not something that, you know, he, he, all economists have pretty much predicted that inflation is going to go down yeah. this year. But it hasn't been going down as fast as, as we'd expected. Now, that has nothing to do with what the government's doing, but they wanted to take credit mm. for it falling. Mm. Um, but if it doesn't get down, if, you know, if we're still at 10% or even at 5% you know, inflation this time next year, um, by the time the election comes around, they're in deep, deep trouble. 5% mm. Bjorn, because they said they've halved it. But, they are, but, they are, but the it doesn't mean that prices yeah, have gone down. Also, no, oh, no, 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 that's, no, no, that's price the thing that people forget. There are it just means they're, they're increasing, increasing less. Yeah, yeah. Increasing I mean, we'll quickly. still be paying nearly five quid for a stick of butter. And that is what people... When people hear, oh, we're going to bring down inflation, I think people hear we're going to bring down prices. Yeah. And that is what will hit them at the ballot box. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's a very fair point. Um, those move to spread, Emma rather than no, butter. No, don't tell her that. Oh, I, I, I use butter literally once a year to cook my Christmas cake. <laughs> so do you use spread? I, 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 if I use anything at all, I use spread. Oh, but I, I I, as you know, I'm permanently on a diet, so it's usually a very low-fat um, cheese, oh, if anything at all. I was I was buying butter. I like butter. But yeah, I've, mo too. I've moved to spread because it's about a third of the price. Absolutely. So there you go. Does it taste nice? It's all right, yeah. yeah see, I like the real stuff. Put a bit right. of Marmite on it. It's oh, wonderful. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Um, to the Mail on Sunday, Fraser, looking at, again at the coronation, but um, bishops aren't overly happy with Charles sort of wanting to be defender of the faiths, as it were. Yeah, so um, uh, actually this, this defender of faith quote goes right back to the 1990s mm. um, when Charles said as king, I don't just want to defend um, the Anglican faith, which you know he's obviously now head of the uh, Anglican church uh, being king, um, but wants to defend um, you know, Britain's a multi-faith, multicultural society. Uh, he wants to defend all faith uh, in general. And this has led to a big row because he wants to involve other faiths in the coronation. But technically, it is an Anglican Christian ceremony that goes back, you know, a thousand years or something. And um, so, you know, the bishops are upset. They obviously want to stick to uh, tradition, and there's a bit of a, a bit of a route. What's What's interesting is like the mail um, talks to you know different representatives of various religions, um, like the Muslim Council of Britain. They talk to um, Sikhs and Hindus, and they all say we're fine with it being a completely Christian ceremony. Mm. Um, often, I'm, I'm reminded of those stories you get it's once a year about um, Christmas being banned, mm. and usually it's not actually 
Muslims or Hindus or Sikhs who, are, who get annoyed about Christmas. They're not bothered at all about no, Christmas. No, but, but in terms of... People it's, acting on their behalf or thinking they're speaking for them. But isn't this quite useful in... in I mean, not for the religious leaders, mm. but actually for people of a Muslim faith or a Hindu faith or a Jewish faith or whatever, that actually they can feel more involved in... The king, with the king. I mean, that's got to be... I mean, that's a positive thing, isn't it? Well, I think, um, you know, it's, it's good that... What will definitely happen is that they will have a... sort of be visible in the ceremony. Yeah. And the specific row is over whether they can do readings or... Yeah. Um, uh, that's... Uh, yeah. So it's kind of... But you know, still, there's no... not presiding over it, is yeah. it? It's just, like, reading a prayer. Well, I, I'm not uh, in charge of... Um, Anglican canon law, but they're pretty <laughs> insistent that they, they can't budge on this. Yeah. Mm. Well, no, as long as they're seen to be there, though. Yeah. And, you um, know, that they, they obviously would be. I mean, it, it does demonstrate the inherent tensions between having someone who is both the head of the Anglican Church, which is um, still probably the majority religion in the country, but not um, anywhere like it was at the last coronation in the 50s, um, and head of state, which is, as we said, we're, we're a fairly secular, multi-faith society. Um, and there are obviously tensions between those two things, and I think that's probably what Charles is trying to represent, but it is, you know, a significant kickback. Um, Fraser said it's not been the same for a thousand years. Now, of course, um, I'm currently reading the Hilary Mantel books, so I can tell you <laughs> all about the fact that it was about 500 years ago that all of this changed, because obviously um, uh, Henry VIII mm. disestablished from the Roman Church, and there was a huge um, kerfuffle then. So these things can and do change, and they change with monarchs and, and the whims of monarchs generally. Um, but I... Uh, I think there is probably a defensiveness around the Anglican Church because it is considerably less a part of public life than it would have been at the last coronation. Mm. OK. Um, Emma, can we have a look at young people in the Mail on Sunday? <laughs> um, breaking up is hard to do, as we know, so young people aren't really doing it, at least not in the same way. No, um, it seems there's been a survey. Um, Gen Z and millennials, so the two young generations younger than mine, are really, really bad at telling you why they don't want to see you anymore, so they'll just ghost you. 71% and 72% of those generations. Just block your number just, or something. Just block your number, never or respond to your reply, text, yeah. just don't reply. Um, my generation's a bit better. It's only like sort of something in the 30s or 40s that we you know, that do that but they still do it um i mean i think it does depend where you're at so if you're in a formal relationship put on your big boy pants and break up with me <laughs> um, if on the other hand we've, we're just at the start and you're just exchanging a few texts we all drift out of those and yeah. so i think there is uh, there are reasons that this might happen but i do think that we do i think there is a conversation to be had about what we owe each other mm. um and I think, you know, I would hate to see younger people not have the kind of rich, rewarding relationships that you would then feel obliged to end it properly with somebody. Yeah. Mm. Roger, are, you, are you a millennial, Fraser? I, I am a millennial, yeah. Yeah, just about. So are you, ter are you terrible at this? You're always just ghosting people? No, I wouldn't. I, I, that, that's cruel, isn't it? I wouldn't do that. Anything like that. Look, he's like, look, how, look how defensive he yeah. was. Ever so slightly guilty. <laughs> no, I think I think there is definitely a, a, a generational shift, okay. and you can see this in the level of um, commitment people are willing to show. You know, people are less likely to get married. You know, people will attribute that to all kinds of things. Um, and also, you know, young people are having less sex than um, their equivalent um, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. That's definitely true. <laughs> which is, you know, I, I think these are quite sad trends, honestly. It, it, they seem yeah, very puritanical, this next generation. My generation was, was all kind of, uh, we don't care about anything, um, you know, all kind of slightly hedonistic and that seems to have almost completely disappeared i wonder if this is i wonder if this is kind of the online generation though if you're online all the time you have fewer face-to-face -face interactions i mean you hear about younger generations especially when they go into their first job not too comfortable picking up the phone and actually having a conversation yeah, yeah. So maybe that extends into into dating lives and it's i mean i'm sure it does but as as and, and if you are only online with someone breaking up with someone online is perfectly reasonable i mean i would send a reasonable message but if you're actually having a face-to-face -face relationship then break up face-to-face -face. Yes. do the right thing break sorry. up put the person. big boy pants on yeah <laughs> yeah quite right too mm. uh, lovely fraser emma thank you we'll catch up with you a little bit later on